about the cell membrane and you know about the nucleus. Um, you know the difference between critters that have a nucleus and those that don't. Those that don't are called prokaryotes. They don't have a nucleus. They don't have any of the organelles we're about to study today and tomorrow. Um, they're littler and a micrometer is one one millionth of a meter and that is the Greek letter mu. Uh, they were the first cells uh, and they're only bacteria. Eukaryotes on the other hand, like you, have a nucleus. They have the organelles that we're about to study. They're bigger, they're older, they're, uh, uh, they, they came around more recently, and it's everybody else. So animals, plants, fungi, and protists. Then we got into the actual cytoplasm, and we started with the cytosol, which is the stuff everything's floating in, and then the cytoskeleton, which is kind of the underappreciated cell part everybody always focuses on the sort of the job doing parts that you can single out cytoskeleton is kind of all throughout the cell but it's super important we'll keep coming back to it the microtubules are how um cell parts with membranes get moved around the cell almost like a, a, a rail system or like a, a track system around the cell um, they also can bundle up and become things on the outside of the cell like flagella which are like whip like tails by the way did you figure out what the only human cell is that has a flagellum. Anybody want to take a shot? Caleb? Sperm cell. That would be a sperm cell. Yep. Yeah, it's got a tail, right? It swims all day. That's a bundle of microtubules. Uh, and then cilia are the kind of more hair-like ones that you see in pond critters that kind of just do this. Although you have those too. Do you know where you have cilia? You know the what? Well, the water that we drink, I don't I hope not. If there were critters with cilia in the water you drank, you might get sick. I'll give you a hint. No. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. All your your whole airway, basically, you know, from like throat all the way down to like the the bronchi, you've got little cilia in there, doing this all day long, and they are coupled with their partner which is mucus, right? The stuff that you secrete, the sticky stuff. Now, when you're, when you're all gunked up like I am, that's overproduction of mucus, but you're always supposed to have a little bit of mucus lining those airways because that stuff traps dirt and germs. And once it traps dirt and germs, then the cilia do this all day long, moving that mucus, basically like a river of mucus coming up and out all the time which is a defense system, basically sticking bad guys to the inside of the airway and then moving them out before they can get into your lungs, which is where it really sucks to have infection. So um, then microfilaments, those are the ones that run all throughout the cell and are hanging onto the inside of the cell membrane. The proteins on the inside of the cell membrane are attached to microfilaments and that's what holds the cell's shape and can change the cell's shape um, in the case of cells that do that. Your white blood cells are an example. They can change shape. In fact, tomorrow we'll watch a, a video um, where you actually see everything that goes on inside a white blood cell before it changes shape. It brings a lot of this stuff together, but I want to do a little more before we do that. Um, is that where we stopped? Or did we do ribosome as well? So here you can see the filaments anchored to the inside of the cell. Um, this is a cool light microscope, uh, colorized version of cytoskeleton. Um, and then, yeah, we started with ribosomes, um, uh, which are made of RNA, which are the basically little protein factories out in the cell. You saw them in your coloring pages as little dots, uh, either sticking to the endoplasmic reticulum or not, but they're not really dot shaped. They're actually, you know, there's two parts to them, kind of weird shaped, made of RNA. And here we are at like the cell parts, besides nucleus and cell membrane, the cell parts that we think of and that are most of your coloring page, most of those are part of what we call 
the endomembrane system. Here's where you start writing. Endomembrane system is a set of five cell parts that kind of work together to do things in the cell. They, they work, they, they hand off parts to each other and they interlock a lot, so we talk about them together. Um, they all have membrane, they're all made of membrane. And <clears throat> they do lots of stuff, but a good way to sort of sum it up is they provide surface to make proteins and lipids and move them around. And they package and move those things around and out of the cell. Uh, there are basically five components of the endomembrane system. You've colored them all at this point. And they are the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, the lysosome, the vacuole, and vesicles. Which note the spelling of vesicles. It's not a huge deal, but I get an awful lot of students misspelling vesicles to match the thing that they know, the word that they know that sounds the most like it. There is no T in vesicles, if you catch my drift. Okay, so that's the five parts. Now we go into each of them and talk about what they do. Um, to kind of get a sense of the whole picture here though, um, here's the nucleus, right? Uh, the endoplasmic reticulum tends to interlock with the nucleus. Um, when RNA comes out of it, it binds a ribosome, which are these little dots here, and typically sticks to the ER and makes a protein and dumps it into the middle of the ER. The ER then sends vesicles with those proteins. These are little membrane-bound vesicles. We call it a vesicle whenever it's just you're sending something from one part to the next. Sends it to the Golgi apparatus, and then the Golgi apparatus messes with whatever it is and, and ships it somewhere else. It might send it out of the cell in what we call a secretory vesicle. They might send it over to a lysosome to get broken down um, or various other stuff. But this is basically just kind of a, a interlocking system throughout the cell dealing with proteins and lipids. Um, so starting, we have the endoplasmic reticulum, kind of the first stop out of the endomembranes or out of the nucleus for a protein. The diagram showed the, the endoplasmic reticulum just outside the nucleus. It actually kind of goes throughout the cell. Um, it comes in two flavors. The rough ER is rough because of ribosomes, which we've just talked about, little protein factories. They're stuck to the rough ER. They make it look like it's kind of polka dotted, and that's why we call it the rough ER. And so newly made proteins from the ribosome get dumped into the ER, typically get modified a little bit, and then transported So that's the rough ER. <clears throat> then on the right-hand side there, you see the smooth ER. It's a little differently shaped and doesn't have ribosomes. All these parts that we're talking about are made of membrane, right? Like, like the nucleus is made of membrane, the cell membrane, obviously. And each of the parts we're about to talk about are what we call membrane-bound organelles. So there has to be something making new membrane parts. That would be the smooth ER. Basically, it is a membrane factory. Phospholipids are produced here. And 
and a lot of carbohydrates as well, because those are the marker tags that, that get stuck onto marker proteins. Questions so far? So we've, you know, if we're talking about the rough ER, basically we've sent instructions out of the nucleus to build protein. The protein got made by the ribosome and then dumped into the ER. ER now sends it in what we call a transport vesicle, which just means it wrapped a membrane around the protein and, and sent it out. Next stop is the Golgi apparatus. This is kind of the shipping department of the cell. This is where the, the stuff finds out exactly where it's going. It's more of a stack. Looks, and you recognize it in the cell because it looks more like a stack of membranes than a network. Um, so proteins come here after they get made and modified in the ER, and here is where they get marked. These are the proteins. To kind of tell them where they are headed. That destination could be somewhere inside the cell, or they could be getting shipped out of the cell. And that's kind of the main section of the endomembrane system. So if we were tracking a protein as it gets made and modified and moved, the typical flow chart would look like this. DNA code to RNA code out through the nuclear pore to the ribosome, Protein gets made and dumped to the ER, then to the Golgi, and then to wherever it's going. That's the typical path. So that's the kind of complicated part. You're done with the hard part. Okay, if you understand that flow, you're good. Um, the rest is just side trips. There's basically two kinds of side trips that stuff can take on its way through. Um, there are times when things need to be broken down. You, you, the cell takes something in and it needs to be broken down or a cell part gets old and it needs to be basically sent to the trash heap. Uh, that is where the, oh no, I jumped the gun, sorry. Sometimes stuff needs to be stored. That's the first thing. Vacuoles are basically just storage compartments. Um, they can store food, water, any other materials. Um, and that's all there is to the vacuole, except side note that plant cells tend to have a big, huge central version of a vacuole filled with pressurized water. Especially in the stems of plants. Stems and stalks. So, anyone want to guess why plant cells often have a central vacuole under lots of pressure filled with water? It's not just spare water in case they run out of water. It's a good thought. It's the pressure that's key here. It's not just to keep stuff flowing through. Although it does help that. Keep the plant like hard. That's it. It's because plants, if you've noticed, plants pretty much have a pretty common game plan. Most plants, uh, they want their leaves as high as they can so nothing shades them from the sun. They want their roots in the ground and they want to waste as little material on the stuff in between as possible, right? They have a skinny stem. That's a pretty vulnerable position. I mean, and you're done, right? So. That's reason for them to have cell walls, but the cell walls are enough. They're not enough to keep it rigid. And so what they do is they fill up these central vacuoles with water pressure 
And man, can that keep something straight, right? That's, uh, you, you know that, even if you don't think you do, if you've ever done uh, a big old belly flop into a pool, right? Water can really hurt, you know, like when you, it resists change pretty well. Um, and so filling something with pressurized water is a great way to keep it rigid, and that's how plants stay upright. What do we call it when plants lose that pressure? We say the plant has, it's a word that means droop. It looks sad. They will. They will oh, when they yeah. lose that pressure, right? Okay, so that's vacuoles. Garbage disposal. In animal cells, when a cell takes something in that it wants to break down, or when it has old cell parts that it wants to destroy, send it to the lysosome. The lysosome is filled with nasty chemicals that will break whatever down. In front of you now is what's going to be a study tool once we get done with it. Um, you're going to end up cutting these apart and making them cell part flashcards. Today, we're going to do just the very basics. You're basically going to write the name of each of those cell parts on the correctly numbered flashcards. Um, just at the top of the flashcard in fairly big letters, I want you to write the names of each of these parts. When you are done doing that, I want you to take your scissors and cut these flashcards apart. And once you're done doing that, then you can start following the directions that are on the first flashcard. First flashcard tells you what to do with the rest of the flashcard. We haven't done all these cell parts quite yet. But the ones we've done, you can start them. And that's what I'd like you to do for the remainder of the period. Uh, I can't find my big box of scissors. So if you don't have your scissors today, you'll need to borrow from someone else. 